Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In previous videos, I've shown how I've designed, built, and used enclosure boxes to securely hold servo motors in the XPS foam baseboard to switch my points. In this video, I'm going to show how and why I've redesigned the enclosure boxes after assessing them for several months. To be fair, I was actually very pleased with the current design of the servo enclosure boxes. The design was very simple, consisting of five pieces that could be joined together using interlocking tabs. The pieces were very easily cut out from 2mm greyboard using my Cricut machine and had proved very easy to build. Only a small amount of PVA or rocket card glue was required to permanently join the pieces and once built, they were easy to install, requiring only a small amount of foam to be removed from the baseboard. Once installed within the foam, they were very strong, even surviving a servo controller configuration error I made that had led to a servo horn trying to take my eye out. The joys of modelling, eh? However, despite being happy with the design, there was always room for improvement, and I discovered a few problems that needed to be overcome. A very minor problem was that the servo horn's movement could be restricted by the side of the box. This was only a minor problem because the servo horn doesn't really need to move very far to throw the point. However, it may be beneficial to have the option to let it move further in some situations. I'm only thinking a couple of millimetres extra travel, but you never know, it may come in handy. A bigger problem was discovered when I was installing point rudding on the first section of the tricky bit. You may remember that I had to pad out the channel that the point rudding ran in, to stop it from bending upwards across the side of the enclosure box. In that instance I'd come up with a pretty simple workaround, and I'd padded out the point rudding channel. But it would be much nicer if a solution could be designed into the enclosure box. The biggest problem by far, however, was that if a servo motor was to fail, then under certain circumstances it would be difficult, or even impossible, to remove the servo from its enclosure box without lifting up track. Specifically, if the point rodding ran below adjacent tracks, the rodding couldn't be moved aside to make space to remove the servo motor. It was essential that this problem was solved before I progressed the build any further. So it was that I embarked on the next version of the enclosure box design. It turned out that there was a simple change I could make to the design that would fix both the servo horn travel and the point rodding height problems. This was to lower the height of the box sides where the point rodding would go by at least the thickness of the cork I was using. This would allow the servo horn to travel an extra couple of millimetres if required and would also allow the point rodding to run flat in its channel in the cork. The final problem was a lot trickier to solve and I can't take credit for coming up with the idea I decided to go with. That goes to my mate Jules who suggested I could perhaps make room to slide the servo underneath the point rodding which would make space to remove it. This was so simple that it was genius. It did mean that the enclosure boxes would need to grow in size, but only by a few millimetres or so. However, once the box had been enlarged, another problem arose. The whole point of the boxes was to provide a strong enclosure to tame the lateral movement of the servo motor's torque, by effectively removing one of the side walls that constrained the motor, the boxes became less effective. So, a removable wall section was devised that would add strength back to the enclosure box. This could easily be removed if the motor ever needed to be replaced and could be slid back into place after a new motor had been installed. Once the new design had been finalised, it was time to cut it out, which I did using my Cricut machine. Once cut out, obviously the first thing to do was to remove the pieces from the cutting mat. There were some quite delicate parts, so this had to be done carefully. 
Once removed, I dry fitted the parts just to make sure they went together as designed. I didn't record the dry fitting process, but here's the enclosure box in its dry fitted state. Once I was happy with the fit, I could glue the pieces together. As there were more parts to the enclosure box, and they had to be assembled in a particular order, it was a little more time consuming to build than the original design. It was also a little more complicated, as it was easy to glue a piece in the wrong way around. I used a good quality PVA glue that tacked the pieces together very quickly, although still needed to wait the usual 24 hours for the glue to cure. Once set, I test fitted a servo and was a little disappointed that it wasn't as snug a fit as I thought it would be. But that was the point of these tests, to iron out any problems before committing to mass production. Obviously, this will be remedied in the next iteration of the design. But for the time being, I pressed on with the proof of concept. I'd eventually be making enclosure boxes that were 30mm, 40mm and 60mm in height to match the thickness of the XPS form I was using as a baseboard. The enclosure box I'd built for the test was 30mm in height, so I found a scrap piece of 30mm XPS form, then marked out and cut a hole for the box. Once the box was inserted into the hole, I placed the servo motor into it. You can see here that it's a little loose fitting, but that didn't matter for this test, as the idea was to see if it could be removed whilst being constrained by point rodding. With that in mind, I secured a piece of point rodding over the top of the servo motor to simulate the motor being trapped. It was then time to test if the design was fit for purpose. I used a small pair of pliers to remove the T-section that was keeping the servo in place. I was then able to slide the servo motor out of the enclosure box with ease. But would it go back in as easily? Well, of course it would. Okay, so that's about it for this update. I have to say a big thank you to Jules, as without his input I'd probably still be trying to figure out how to release trapped servo motors. I'm going to make a slight modification to make the servo motor fit more snugly inside the box, but other than that, I'm really rather pleased with the new design, especially as initial testing has gone well. I could still use the older design boxes where the point rodding doesn't need to run under the track, but this new design makes it so much easier to remove the motor that I may end up using them everywhere. Before I put them into mass production though, please let me know what you think. 
Can you think of any other modifications or adjustments I could make to improve the design? Or should I just start building them? Alternatively, if you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage Modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update on my progress soon. Bye.